We know that the CFA exams are tough, but many candidates also struggle with meeting the work experience requirement. You have to have 4,000 hours over the course of 36 months in relevant investment decision-making work, which we'll talk about. For anyone who is new into the industry or transitioning into finance from another industry, that can be relatively difficult. So what's the best way to get that work experience requirement done? The language that the CFA Institute uses when they describe this requirement is fairly particular. But in my experience, they're a little bit lenient towards what they'll count as investment decision-making related work. So let's talk about it. The Institute says for your work experience to count towards their work experience requirement, it must involve evaluating and applying financial, economic, or statistical data or models towards the investment decision-making process, supporting that process, supervising those who are taking part in that process, or educating others on that investment decision-making process. There's a ton of language there, but I think the way that this is gonna to apply to most of us, and maybe the best way to summarize this information, is that your work needs to involve analysis or evaluation of financial information or supporting the investment decision-making process could almost be said as just helping investment professionals, which is really good for a lot of us who start off in junior positions. I think the main hurdle that most candidates will kind of identify when they look at this work experience requirement is this investment decision-making language. And they'll look at that and go, man, I'm just an operations person, or, or man, I'm just an internal support person doing some scheduling or sending clients reports and generating information from clients and things like that. But again, applying financial data as a part of this investment decision-making process can include generating reports, getting information from clients about investments they're using, put it, putting those together and providing them to a salesperson or an analyst on a team that you support. You don't necessarily have to be in a front office uh, investment decision-making like trading or portfolio management role to meet the CFA Institute's requirements here. And that's good news for a lot of us, right? Because the majority of people pursuing the charter are in their 20s and 30s, and they may not be at the point in their career where they're running a mutual fund or hedge fund, or even sitting as an analyst on a desk for one of those things. There are also a lot of roles that the information in the CFA program apply to that isn't directly related to stock picking or trading. So of course the types of jobs that are still gonna benefit by their employees being CFA charter holders would also constitute as work experience in this work experience requirement. It still has to be related to financial information and investing. So the most common type of activity that I've heard of as not counting towards the Institute's requirements here for relevant work experience is accounting and bookkeeping and things of that nature. So it needs to be more related to the finance industry and not the accounting industry. I know that those lines can get blurred. There's a specific group at the Institute though that will review your work experience. You'll write up a description and provide some support supporting documentation if need be. And so even if it is an accounting type role, but in which you are making financial product recommendations, that's probably gonna to count too. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I think they're a little bit lenient. Passing the exams is and probably will always remain the most important requirement. So the work experience, they're not super tough on, but you just should know what you're getting into when you have to meet that requirement. Don't take it from me though. You should certainly use the CFA Institute's work requirement self-assessment test. It is a little questionnaire that you'll fill out on their website. And that's gonna be really important if you are somewhere on the line towards your experience, maybe counting and maybe not, if you're sitting for the exams right now, because of course you need to get three years of experience that is going to count. And you really do not wanna assume that your current responsibilities are gonna to count towards this work experience requirement and then continue in the same job and get through all the exams and then go to apply for your charter and realize that they're like awarding you zero relevant work experience hours and you still have to wait another three years. That would just be a really bad scenario. So even if you're a little bit on the fence about this, go through their self-assessment. I'll add a link to the page on their website in the description down in this video. Please do not skimp on this requirement. As much time as we all are spending or have spent in studying for these exams, do yourself a favor and take 20 minutes to, to do this questionnaire. This exercise will provide you with one of two things, and these two things are the reason why the CFA Institute has this questionnaire on their website. Number one is it'll give you some comfort because you may have realized that your job and your responsibilities now do constitute as investment decision-making relevant work experience, or if it doesn't, you'll know that, and you'll know that you either need to ask for a shift in your responsibilities in the company that you're working at, or look for a new job so that the work experience you're getting does count towards their requirement. It's important to note too that if you're in a role that has multiple types of responsibilities, then potentially only like 50% of your hours worked will count towards the CFA's 4,000 hour requirement. I myself was concerned I might fall into this camp when I was studying for level two. I kind of started to look more into this work experience requirement. My job is half working face-to-face 
with clients, investing, rebalancing, talking about investment decision making, um, working on the firm's models, things like that. The other half is kind of operational, working with financial planning software, working on different internal reports. So I didn't know if that half of my duties at the time were actually going to count towards this work experience requirement. And the Institute will just designate, okay, half of this time have counted. So it's a 4,000 hour requirement. Let's say you pass three levels in three years and you've been working during that time and you have 36 months of work experience requirement, which is typically 6,000 hours, but they're only counting 50% of your responsibilities as related to investment decision making then you only have 3,000 of the 4,000 hours you're going to need. So it's going to take you another year or 1,000 hours of relevant work experience requirement to get this done. I was concerned that could have been the scenario for me as well. Luckily, the language I used at the time was about financial planning and financial planning report assimilation, and the Institute gave me the okay. They said that that experience counted towards this investment decision-making process, which was good for me because all the work I had done up to that point counted. I still had to do about six more months because at the time it was a 48-month requirement, not a 36-month requirement, which I've already complained about in another video. So there was a six-month period there that I still had to wait before getting the charter. Don't let that be a 36 month period for you, check if your work experience is going to count. Still, I want to go back to this interpretation of what constitutes investment related decision making or investment related support type work. It's not black and white. There's no clear cut line in the sand that you can say, oh no, this is or this isn't. And so when you're actually applying for the charter after you've passed all the exams and you're writing out the descriptions of your work to the CFA Institute, just be honest but really add tidbits in there about how that work may have supported the investment decision-making process if it doesn't clearly support it. If your job actually does aid the people who are making trades or making portfolio decisions, then let the Institute know that and let them understand how your firm works and how you fit into that piece so that they can make the best decision possible towards deciding if that work constitutes investment related. So certainly don't stretch the truth, but emphasize whatever part of your work does actually constitute that investment decision making process. And I don't think they're going to be sticklers on this. I think if you have a good case to be made about why your work supported investment decision making, then they're going to sign off on it and you'll be well on your way to getting a charter. Interns. For a long period in the CFA Institute's history, I heard that they did not count any hours worked during an internship towards this requirement. Now, I counted some of my hours and they accepted those when I was working as an intern. So if I'm right and that it used to not count, that policy has changed, which is good for all of us who had summer interns throughout college. That's important to know, especially if you're about to apply for the charter, use your internship work hours and just see if they'll count them. They probably will if they're investment decision related. But I also wanna encourage anyone who is considering starting the CFA program, or maybe you're near the end of your college or university career and you have started the CFA program, make sure you're focused focusing on getting a good relevant internship for a lot of reasons. I mean, it's it's going to help you a lot in deciding what type of job you ultimately want to do, which is the biggest advantage to an internship. But it's going to do wonders for building your resume and also, if you do end up passing all three exams, getting you some of that relevant work-related months that you're going to be able to add up and, and get your charter sooner rather than later. For those of you who are not working in finance but are participating in the CFA program and hoping to pass the exams as a way into the finance industry, I'll encourage you to keep doing that. I think it's a great way to get into finance and certainly you'll have an understanding of if you want to actually be working in finance and you'll have much more of a background than even, even a lot of people who started off in the finance industry. But it is going to be tough because you're going to have to wait to get that relevant work related experience. My advice to you is going to be all the same things I've said in my how to get an internship in finance, how to get a job in finance or as a financial advisor or whatever else you want to be doing. Call, 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 cold email, LinkedIn message, do everything you can to just make contacts to these people. Just yesterday, I spoke with a very famous, very prominent and successful uh, talking head and industry expert in the finance field. And he said his biggest issue right now in running his business is hiring good people. And he's looking for people. He said, like myself at the time, um, I was on a call with my employer though. So you know, there wasn't any, there wasn't any more to that conversation at that point. I don't think there will be, but anyway, people out there are always looking for good hires. And if you can provide a solution to some issue, even if you don't know a lot about the finance industry, just like, Hey, you need people to build financial plans for you is one example I've used for a lot of college students. I can learn financial planning software and I can put together a thousand financial plans over the course of a three month internship so that you're you're set for the year. You know, you're done with your financial plan requirement or whatever your firm has. You have to figure out a way that you can solve a solution that they have. Of course, if you've passed all the CFA exams, you're probably looking for more than just an entry level role, but even if you are, 
make as many contacts as you can. The cold emails is going to be the best way to learn about who's hiring and to put yourself in a position where you can be the one getting hired. If you've made it to this point in the video, I want to say thank you very much. The YouTube watch time is a big part of the algorithm they use in promoting this video to other people. So I thank you for your support on this channel. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already, both of those things also help me out very much. And as always, thanks for watching.